chapter 11. to the future, faith is now. Faith actually already sees. Okay? So, uh, a true hope is based upon the foundation of faith. I mean, there's times we just kind of have hope and it's just haphazardly. There are times we have that. Um, but true hope that is based and has the foundation of faith knows it's going to happen. It already has the attitude of what's going to happen, but faith actually already says it's done. Okay, and so, um, so I'm, I'm just that kind of might be a little bit of foundation, and we'll pick up again on that. Yes, sir. So hope is hoping God will, and faith is more than that. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. We, we're going like thinking about Abraham. Yeah. Abraham believed God. Okay. Um, well, that's probably towards the end of the thing, but we'll jump on into that just for a moment. Let's go to Romans chapter. Oh, where is that at? Oh. Let me get my notes because I know I got it. So, chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. says, therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise. Now, there's chapter 17. Now, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations 
before him whom he believed, even God, who hath quickened the dead, and calling those things which be not as though they were. Okay? So given the foundation of those things which are not as though they were. Faith, again, um, when you have faith, you believe to see, not see to believe. Okay? True faith begins to already see. Okay? Now, uh, let's, let's keep on going. Verse 18. Who against hope believed in what? Hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he did what? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had what? Promise. promise he was what? Able. Able to perform. So in his mind, it was once he believed, once that faith, once God spoke that word, he believed. And then he had the hope in what the word has said, the word that was spoken. So when the word is spoken and that faith there, now you have a hope in what was spoken. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, but I'm going to kind of go, go back and forth a little bit. So God says, uh, like, he, so He told you, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. Man, I believe it. Okay, and I have a hope. Faith already says it's done, and my hope is toward the future of it happening. Okay? So, faith already says it's done. My hope is to the future of it happening. Even when he took Isaac, got ready to offer him, in his mind, and by faith, Isaac was dead. His faith had already spoken because he said, me and the lad are going to go worship he said, but we will come again. So, but in his mind and in his heart, I'm going to kill him. He was, dead. he was good as dead. But he also knew he was good as dead. He was going to be good as rose up, raised up. God was going to raise him. God was going to do something. But he knew God was going to supply and was going to make it happen. So, I got faith in what he's spoken my hope in the future of us coming back, but it's based upon what God has said. Not just merely of me trying to work it up in my own mind. It's based upon the Word of God or what God has promised. So hope only... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. I would have thought mm -hmm. hope could come before God speaks it. Like, I hope for a million dollars. No, uh -huh. no. Five million dollars. Yes. Well, if I'm gonna hope, I'm gonna hope for as much as I want. Yes. Many millions of dollars. Yes. God has spoken anything to me, but I hope for it. Uh, uh, and, and, all, and all I'm saying is that that is a hope one day that maybe you might get a million dollars, but that's not hope based on upon faith. Correct. In the heart. That's right. just a mental fact of hope. Okay. Right. But you. Uh, but there's a hope that is based upon the faith. Being oh. the substance. Oh, so we're talking about. So, so okay, so what? So, so basically, what really what we're talking about is intellectual faith versus right. scripture faith or the faith from the heart. And the same thing for the word hope. And it would be the same thing for the okay, word hope okay. because faith is yeah. the substance. Correct. Okay. Of things hoped for. Okay. But you know, he talks about having the breastplate of righteousness or even a breastplate of faith in one scripture, and then he says. Um, which kind of gives you a sense of the region, if you will, the heart. But he talks about the helmet of hope. Or he talks about one place. Where, there's another place other than the armor in Ephesians that he mentions about hope in regards to the helmet. You know, so he lets you know kind of in the region of our mind. So what I'm saying is, hope. You can have this to hope. Man, I hope one day I'm able to do this. But it's not necessarily based upon faith. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And all I'm saying is, therein lies the difference between having faith from our heart and intellectual faith. Mm -hmm. Faith from the heart always knows and it always produces what has been birthed in the heart through faith. And not just by, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, I through believe. God's spoken word? God's spoken word and His word. Correct. Okay, through God's, God's word. word. I have God's a, word. I have a little example. I, 
I hope the brother got to go and buy my breakfast this Saturday. Come on. I don't have faith that he's going to do You don't it. have faith that he's going to do it. Okay, well, you know what? You probably going to get it. He's shaking his head right now like you ain't get it. <laughs> and he's shaking, he's shaking his head already. You know, there, there, are, there are things that God has spoken. And, and so when, when Abraham, Abraham was one, the father of faith, because he moved with such obedience and took God for what he said. And when God said this, Abraham began to move. And he, that, that faith was now was present. There was a hope in the future. Now honestly, when they first spoke, Sarah laughed, he kind of chuckled. Like, I'm old. Like, I, I ain't doing nothing. She's old, she's past the time. And then God basically is like, is anything too hard for the Lord? And then it clicked. Yes, ma'am. Sister, mother friend. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get it all together too, so I'm trying to articulate it how I received it. My hope is that these marriages come together. Uh-huh. Brother Sean speaks. Uh-huh. Others. Uh-huh. And the faith that these young people Mm -hmm. Our babies mm -hmm. are going to grow up mm -hmm. and work in God's kingdom. Okay. I believe I'm going to see that before I leave. Amen. So that's hope and faith. Right? That's, that's the hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when you have biblical faith, there's going to be hope. Okay. When you have hope <coughs> without faith, then it's just hoping in your mind. But when it's hope based upon faith, it's something that you know is true and will happen. And it lines up with what he has spoken to you and within his word. Yes, ma'am. But if you don't know that he's spoken, like, like in part of you know, the impartation. Right. Mm -hmm. Then it's just still hope. Then it's just still hope. Right. It, 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 hope, and I would also say slash desire. Because there's nothing wrong with us having hope and a desire. There's, please let me, let me say this. There's nothing wrong with having hope in a sense in the mind. Okay. There is, a, or, or faith in the mind, or belief. But there is a problem with just having belief in the mind and hope in the mind and never allowing it to get in your heart because that type of belief and hope does not produce a change. True faith produces change. For instance, brother said, hey, went to a club, thank God for his conviction because I realized I don't belong in a club. There's something that's in the heart. That has happened, not just in the mind. There's an action that follows. But I cannot believe in Christ or into Christ, have faith in Christ, and then walk contrary. Okay. With that being from Romans 10 10, you know, people, and, and, it, well, I, and I use, I'm going to quote the scripture. Romans 10 10, it says, Verse 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Again, you know, um, just to say, just to believe, we talked about this for the last few weeks, but first you have to repent and believe. To believe without repentance is not true belief. Okay. Again, Hebrews 6 and 1 and 2, the, the, six, the six foundational stones of the doctrine of Christ. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, and then doctrine of baptisms, and then the laying on of hands, and then the resurrection of the dead, and then eternal judgment. So in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, he gives us foundational stones of the doctrine of Christ. So first you've got to have repentance, and you've got to have faith toward God. So I'm going to just say, just believe only. Just to say believe only is not ministering the message that Jesus even ministered. First thing that Jesus said was repent. Then he said believe. 
Okay? But oftentimes people make a profession, and, and even Christians have been making a profession of, I'm saved, I'm in Christ, but their actions are totally contrary to what they make in a profession. Because if you have a true profession of Christ from a faith in the heart, then that means I'm, there's an action toward what you're saying that I'm doing. You can't say, I'm saved. I'm not talking about um, being like a just man fall seven times but get back up again. I'm not saying you fall and you, you necessarily make a mistake. But it's talking about a lifestyle. If you make a profession in Christ, Christ is my Lord, He is my Savior, and there is no change in character, no change in your life, no change in your actions, then there was something lacking within those first couple steps. I would probably say there really wasn't no true repentance. Amen. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Just continue. Yeah. Because you're looking really you like. Saying hope and faith can only really be. Well, you're not saying it can only be biblical. No. 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 Because you. Just like your shooter said, I hope I get a million dollars one day. There's no wrong with that. Just, but do you say? Uh, I, I just was letting her know my basis of the Bible class for tonight, or what it, basically what I'm really focusing on is the difference between, say, believing with our mind and believing from our heart. Okay. We can have we can have hope. We can have desire. I, mean, I hope one day this happens. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. I, so I, I don't want to say that there's something wrong. What I am saying to to the professing saint, the professing Christian, to the professing world, if you're saying I profess Christ and I'm walking contrary to Christ, are you saying I'm saved? I know I'm saved, but I do everything the way I did before I ever got saved. You ain't saved. See, that's hard here. Yeah. What you say? <laughs> I said, if you say I'm saved, I'm a saint of God, I'm a Christian, but I do everything the exact same I did before I ever got saved, I'm saying, you're not saved just because you say I believe. Yeah. The Bible is clear that there's change that begins to happen. And that's why I'm saying there's a difference. So I'm saying there's a difference, and it is bad just to believe in our mind, but never truly believe in our heart. Because just believing or having faith or belief in our mind only will never secure and will never bring forth a desired result. <laughs> and that's fruit in God and growth, sanctification, which is totally another lesson. I'm going to do that one day, salvation versus sanctification, because those are two different things too. Amen. Because to be saved and to be sanctified, one is a process, one is instantaneous. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, okay, because I'm trying to find a good example. So your house on the hill that y'all went to go see. Uh-huh. You believe in your mind you're going to have that house. I was just talking. I, I, I got a hope. It ain't nothing God has spoke to me. And that's, it's and just, that's I'm just saying that's in my mind. Excuse if God don't confirm it. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Absolutely. I mean. And I'm saying, and there's nothing wrong with me saying, man, I have a hope I got a house like that one day. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but there are times. That God speaks a word. And just as Abraham, as we read, he said, and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. We say, well, man, how did he do that? And he kind of waver a little bit. I mean, because then he ended up getting a, uh, who was a Hagar? And, you know, he kind of started to go outside the will of God. It was like, man, then his faith wavered. But he believed when God spoke and he was going to have a promised son, the way it was going to happen, he, he began to waver in a little bit in a sense thinking, well, maybe this is the way God is opening the door for me to do it. You've got to kind of understand custom and everything, but God said, no, it's going to come through your loins and through Sarah, not nobody else. He, he kind of was thinking, well, maybe Hagar is like the, like the liaison, if you will. Maybe she's going, no, no, I didn't tell you it was going to be like that. I said it was going to be like, okay, my, my bad. And, just turned, and so he staggered out his man. So what, a, what about the uh, ones that... Uh Maybe a babe that really can't hear the voice of God quite yet, mm -hmm. but they're 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 believing, they're hoping on something, and God speaks it. I mean, it's still gonna come to pass, right? Uh, how do they know that they would that was faith that they had versus hope? Just for just for a babe, you know what I mean? Or give me, or, give me, give me, help me out. I'm I trying. Mean, like to... there's a baby Christ that's hoping for something mm -hmm. in in really believing that God is gonna do it, but yet don't know the voice of God to say, okay, God, He put that in my heart, and He partakes that. You know, he pretty is. It's there. Yeah. In, oh, okay. Yeah. Versus anything God does it for them. You know, just just that untrained ear. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, 
To me, it's, I mean, I, 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 only thing I can say about that is more they'll just begin to learn his voice. That don't mean that guy is not going to do it. Right. Well, okay, what about the unsaved? What about, what about the unsaved? Those that are not um, in Christ. Okay. Does this still apply to them? And as far as having hope and then having faith. If they have faith that... You know, because people that's not saved have faith. Yeah, they do. But that goes back to the law. Uh, the law. Faith in, 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 in what kind of... Faith? They, they have faith, like say for instance that, you know, they pray over something. They pray over their sick child or they pray that their child is going to be healed or maybe they're going to be healed from cancer or, or any type of illness that they have. And sometimes they have that faith also and it happens. So was that not the faith of God because they were unsaved? Or does that go back to just being a law? I got, I'll, be, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, I was going to say an example of what Sharice was saying would be when you was praying for your pipes in the trailer. Right. Yeah. I was going to mention that, too. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. Um, yeah, to say that someone who is not saved, um, no, no God, God is not obligated to do it. But that don't mean he won't. In the sense of be merciful. Okay, you know, if, you know, I'm not saying I'm asking God, will you deliver my child? He might do it. I'm saying he, he, he might do it. He might not. Not in, not in that sense, but if he did speak it to us, he's obligated to his word, and he's going to perform it. But he's not going. So he's not going to speak it to them. They are not going to have the same benefit that we have. So I ask, or will they, can they hear his voice? Can they hear his voice? Yes. If, he, if he decides to speak to them, okay. he can. So and they have a desire and they have a response to have to happen when they hear his voice. He's not going to just be speaking and just talking to them like he's talking to us. If he's talking to them, he's talking to them that they might respond to him. You know, I mean, his desire is that they come to him. He's not just holding intimate conversations with somebody not saved like he would one of his children. That's what I mean from that standpoint. But there's been many of us who prayed probably before we ever got saved. I did, you know. And but I, I, I personally can't say even when I pray for myself that I really even have faith. I just pray because I ain't know what else to do. I personally pray because I was taught to pray, or I was always taught when you need help, you ask God for help. Mm -hmm. However, I wasn't trying to walk or commit my life to Him yet. I just wanted whatever situation to change, and He knew that as well. And sometimes He was merciful. I thank God for His mercy and His grace. But I, I don't, I don't personally know if He did it just because I cried out to Him at that moment. I'm saying I don't have the answer to that in, in that regard. So when you go, when you uh, talk about... Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead first, go ahead. When, when you talk about the, um, the, the law of reaping and some... The law of reaping and some, how, how even some people... And how even some, you know, that don't believe, right. even believe in that law of reaping and some. Mm -hmm. And so that principle. If you, if you yeah. uh, take into consideration a person that is not saved, and they have the, the faith mm -hmm. stronger than maybe even a Christian, that when they're praying this prayer, that God is going to come through. Does that the same? If they have that does heart, that same if, still apply if they to have that prayer? heart faith, then God will do what He said He'll do. I say that based upon the centurion. The centurion wouldn't say, yeah. but he had faith in Jesus Christ that He can heal His servant. In so much, He said, "I tell you what, you ain't got to come out your hands. You ain't got to step your foot in my door. If you just speak the word." Because I'm a man on an authority, and I understand order, and I understand authority. And he says, if you just speak the word, I believe my servant will be healed. Jesus spoke the word and said in that self-same hour, he was, he was healed. So, again, that faith came from the heart. He also acknowledged Christ. You know, and whatever happened to the sincere evidence, that soldier after that, whether he ever got saved or anything like that, have no idea. Okay. So no, there are times, and God has definitely moved for those that are not saved based upon their faith and belief in Him. But I'm saying that faith 
was not mere in the mind right. that came from the heart. But I'm saying he knows the difference. You know, I'm, I, that's what I'm saying. He knows the difference. The, the thing in that though kind of goes back to what we were saying before, where some they're satisfied with just receiving the blessing without taking the blessing. And rather, his his purpose isn't just to give people deliverance, just to people get blessed or whatever without really turning to him. His desire is that they turn to him. That's why I even mentioned to the ten, he said, did not ten get healed and only one come back to give thanks? His desire would have been that all ten come back. Yeah. In his omniscience, he knew only one would. But my desire is that all ten come back. But only one gave a heart feel, or gave a heart or responded from the heart to come back and even give thanks to the one that healed him. So he said, man, ten of y'all was cleansed, but only one came back. But his desire was for all ten of them to come back and give him some glory. So, so the, the individual makes the choice how they respond to the voice that they heard. Because we all had to hear his voice at some point not being saved in order to even come to him. Because he said, the day you hear my voice, hard not your heart. So you had to hear his voice to even come. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so was, I, I had to use my mind. Uh -huh. My mom, um, she was raised Catholic. Uh -huh. She says that she talks to God all the time. Uh -huh. He has these very intimate conversations with okay. her. Like, I mean, if, I mean, if I if I was really convinced, I would think that she had a better relationship with God than some people I know just off of just her conversation and how uh -huh. she portrays to me that it's, it's, it's tight like that. Okay. Now. And she'll like pray things or say things or tell me things, and then she'll be like, boom, it just happened, and this and that, and like almost like whatever conversation she's having with God and Him having with her, these things are happening. And so for that, she doesn't feel like she has to necessarily do what everybody is doing because she sees the fruit and the blessing. Mm -hmm. that are going forth and I'm like she's legit saying she's talking to him like a safe person would talk to him okay. so are you telling me that she's deceived I mean she's like talking to him she's, or she'll be uh -oh. like I, Lord told me that this like for example I used to she'll be like the Lord told me he was going to make it alright between us he didn't even tell me that but I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> <laughs> then it boom then it seems like it's manifesting and then boom she's like yep and I know and the Lord said it and, and this and it and, and almost like confirmation she's getting from God talking to her telling her things do you think God could be talking through your mother to get that message to you maybe he using her as like an he used the dog James, James, Book of James. Book of James. I'm not going to like, prepare it. Don't go, don't go, don't go. No, she understand what you mean. She understand what you mean. Yeah, she understand what you mean. Yeah. Okay, well, let me, let me, okay, let me say this. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer, but I'm going to also use the scripture, okay? But I'm, I'm going to say this. You know, what first of all, you uh, I, think, I think it's chapter 2. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at it right. Um, and so I, I'm just going to say this, too. You know, especially, uh, I'm careful on how I talk about people's family. Okay. On what I say. And I'm just being honest. Maybe I'm being too honest. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Honestly opposed to that I am even a little bit different than I am to that person one on one. Okay. Not because I'm scared of a crowd, but I am scared of men's interpretation, or sometimes of what's being said, or misinterpreting what's being said, or running with it and being stupid. Amen. Right. Okay. I don't know how else to say that. Okay. Or you know, what pastor said, you be quiet. That ain't even that ain't even wisdom. Okay. He that winneth souls is wise. Okay. 
but I'm going to still tell you the truth at the same time. Okay, so, okay, so I, I think I think this is where I'm at. Okay, so, and so I'm using this in conjunction with this. Is it for each uh, what did the prophet my brother you say he had faith? Okay, yeah, let's, let's start at verse 13, no, 14. Chapter 2, James chapter 2 and 14. What does the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding you give them not these things which are needful to the body, what does the prophet? Even so, if it had not works, is dead being alone. If I'm sorry, even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and have, I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So, okay, so then you look at that, and now I'm going to use that in conjunction with what you're saying because that can leave one almost feel like, Well, man, I got faith, I'm doing some things, things is happening. Okay? And you think, well, man, well, why, why do I need to believe anything different? Because it seems like when I pray, God answers. Okay? But now we have to now go line upon line throughout the Scripture. You know, a lot of times we, we'll just take one portion of the Scripture and then, oh, that's, I'm all good. Where we, we talked about this a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, where he also going to say, um, many are going to say in that day, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I did many. It says, mighty works or wonderful works. Not in my name. I did it in your name. It said, and he's going to stand there and he will say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Key part in that is one, iniquity. Second one is, I never knew you. Said I never have a relationship with you. Amen. Okay. So, is it possible for anybody to be deceived based upon um, seeing things that they say they pray for, get a result from? Is, is it possible that they can be deceived? Absolutely. They can be deceived within themselves based upon the work's sake. But have iniquity, and they work iniquity, meaning this is my life, this is my character. Even as we're going through this, you again, you cannot profess a life of Christ. Uh, let's, let's go to Romans chapter, uh, I want to say 6 maybe. Now I'm jumping all over now. See, I, see, I like this. Though. I like this. Uh, Romans, let's see, is it 6? Yeah, 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 I like that. 6 chapter 1, verse 1, verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Okay, so he goes back. Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized what? Into his death. Therefore we are what? Buried with him in baptism. Into his death. That's why one. That's one reason why baptism is so important. It symbolizes burial. You don't bury nothing that ain't dead. Once you die, anybody within the natural thing, and just through most any kind of culture or anything, when somebody dies, they do something with the body. Most of them bury. You have some who actually burn or cremate, but most of them bury. Why? Because it's dead, right? So. Part of baptism means I am dead and I die with Christ. Because I believe what Christ did for me, I died when he died. So once I proclaim my faith in him, that means there ought to be a death. That's part of repentance. There ought to be a death, death to myself. Once I die, there ought to be a baptism to bury that old man. Okay? So... If I have the urge to smoke, if I got the urge to drink, if I got the urge, I'm going to say, let's just say I'm an alcoholic. I mean, I just like to drink. I mean, I just can't get enough of it. And, and I, every time I go home, I give me something to drink until I pass out. And every day, whatever. Once, you know, let's say my wife comes home and I'm laid out on the floor, passed to a heart attack. Am I going to get a drink? No. Why? I'm dead. You could throw a bottle of wild Irish rose in front of me. 
<laughs> That's only because I worked at I worked at the gas station. <laughs> I worked at the gas station, so I only call out stuff I knew from the gas station. Code 45, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give me that 40. You can throw a bottle, you can you can set it down, you can put it in my casket. There's no way I'm gonna get the urge to drink it. Why? Because I'm dead. Well, it's the same way our life should be in Christ. If we profess him, once we come dead, once we bury that man, we should no longer be bound by the urges that want to take us captive. Amen. That means sin can't control me anymore. Why? Because I'm dead to that sin. And I buried that old man. So then Paul says here, therefore, verse 4, therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was what? Raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also what? Should walk in what? Newness. What and the what? The newness of life. Newness and the newness of life, which means if I'm dying out the self, I'm dead. Now I'm rising just like Christ did. In what? Not in my old life. This is I'm rising up in the newness of life. There is no way He ever said you can profess me, confess me, and you can be buried and rise up the same old zombie. This ain't the walking dead. That's the move. This ain't the walking dead. He said, but once you bury that old man, now there's a newness of life. So, what I then, and, and, uh, what I would question to anyone who has a relationship with God, then your life will line up with what you say you have experienced. Are you saying I ain't saying? I'm saying what the Word of God says. I'm saying you might be getting some prayer through. You might be getting some prayers answered. Nothing but the grace and the mercy of God. But your life is not reflected that one of a child of God according to God's truth. And this is his truth. The word of God. This is the standard by which we, we, we live by. Not by what the world says. This is our standard. Amen? Amen. Is that... Does that make it clear or not really? So I'm saying, I, I, I'm, so a person can be deceived based upon works or what they believe as the blessings of God. We bless just for waking up, saved and unsaved. He does say, I reign on the just as well as the unjust. So there are people who receive the blessings of God. People every day all over the world, saved and unsaved, receive blessings from the Lord and through His sovereign mercy. But his children get extra benefits that those who are not don't have. That's but if I have a relationship, and I say this often, and I say this, and I don't care if you Holy Ghost field or not, whatever, I have a hard time with you having a prayer life and you mean as a rattlesnake. I mean, how are you getting all this word from the Lord and revelation and can't nobody even touch you? You ain't that tight. You ain't that good. If they can touch, if Jesus can leave himself open to where people can at least come and touch him, how much more shall we be able to be touched? But if, if you really live in this thing, if you really professing whatever you say and you're making a confession or profession of, your life should reflect that of what you're professing. Amen. It, would, it would be foolish. For me to say, I'm a police officer, and you don't never see me in the car. <laughs> you don't see me with handcuffs. You don't see me with nothing. You think, okay, but then it'll be another thing. I might have you fooled if I got the outfit, but you don't never see me do nothing that police do. I go in the store, I got my outfit on, they're robbing the store. But I stand there like, I, I can't do nothing. You would think, ain't you a police officer? No, I just look like one. If I take it matters in my own hands, even though I got the outfit and subdue somebody, I might have helped out the clerk. I might have put somebody on the ground. I might have put them in handcuffs. But I did it without the authority of Indianapolis Police Department. And I can be in trouble for impersonating an officer. Even though the person might have got captured, they may have got subdued, the, cop, the real cops is going to come, take him to jail, and then they're going to sit me down too. And say, if you was impersonating a police officer, you was speaking 
and you didn't have the authority to speak. That's why it's important to be a child and an ambassador of Christ because you may be speaking things, but are you truly an ambassador of Christ? Because if you're not, you're speaking without the authority backing you. Good I'm sorry, Mother Frank, you had your hand. No, 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 you already said oh, no. I was going to say that the Lord oh. is sovereign and He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But you said hey, Amen. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, that, 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 that's one reason why I'm, I'm really talking about this biblical faith, if you will, or faith from the heart versus faith of the mind. It, there is a, it, it's a, it's a spirit that has been here for a long time. It's not nothing new. But there, it, it, it is bad to just think that I can say I believe here and, and I can do whatever I want. Because believing from here doesn't change. It doesn't bring about a change. It gives you some knowledge. It gives you some facts. It gives you some understanding of maybe what you... What you've read, what you hear, what you might even understand and kind of know. But when you profess, when you have true faith from the heart, it brings about a change. And you begin to find that as, as you begin to then really dive in and study the Word. Because we talked about that last a uh, couple weeks ago, even like they're dealing with Romans 10.10. 10, when he says, uh, let's go to that. Let's go back to that Romans 10.10. 10. I got the sweater on. I'm burning up. Getting, getting hot, getting excited. Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers, and I'm trying to do the best I can to explain, but I'm explaining from the Word of God. And I explain it with the revelation and understanding and the faith that I see. Somebody was like, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that, but that's great. Let's sit down. We, we can debate. We can talk with iron sharpened iron. Let's, let's discuss the Scripture. But give me some words. You know, give, give me some word. Oftentimes, we, you know, kind of going back to that sanctification, that sanctification is a process of being sanctified, set apart, holy, growing, allowing fruit, you know. And, and oftentimes, we, we want to equate even fruit to the same thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and it's two different things. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is one thing, fruit is something totally different. There was never a prerequisite from the apostles to look, wait for somebody to know if they show fruit in their life, they seen the Holy Ghost because it fell upon them. And then there was a manifestation. And never once did they say the Holy Ghost came, or they was waiting to see, okay, they believe in Christ, now let's see if they get some fruit. Never says it. They believe. Oftentimes they repented, they believed, and were baptized. There was four instances where they believed, they were baptized, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost on the same moment. Amen. That's another lesson. I'm sorry, I got a little excited. I'm a little, a little on there. Then the, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, or that unto, we talked about, is the same as into. When you actually look at the translation, meaning into or in. Okay, the same thing in John 14 and 1, where Jesus says, believe in God, believe also in me. That in was an in too. Now, I, I heard, or I read this in a book. First, I seen somebody make reference to this, and I was like, oh, I thought that was pretty good. Now, there used to be a time I would read something, and I would just take it up, like, oh, that's good. And I wouldn't study it. But now it's my, I'll read something, and I'll, it shaped me a little bit. I'm like, I don't know. And guess what? I grab out my other books and I grab out my concordances and stuff and I study it out for myself because, because I, I've often just heard what somebody said and never never really studied out what they said and I would just take it for granted that what they said was true but I want to make sure what they said is true so I will grab the word and grab my references. So I grab my strong concordance and I begin to look. And I was like, you know what? He's absolutely right. That word is actually does mean in too. That in is a motion. It's, 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 it's a motion. It's not just a, I, I got some knowledge of. There's a, it's a verb. That means if I believe in and it's a verb, a verb means something's in action. Something's moving. A noun means person, place, or thing. Correct? I mean, this is who you are. You know, sort of like in Deuteronomy, he said, uh, he, where he talks about blessed in a city or whatever, he said, well, if you do this, blessed shall ye be. 
that when you really looked at that blessed, it's not a verb. He's really saying you're just going to be blessed. Well, we often look at that as being a noun, being a verb that God's going to bless you. He's saying, no, you're just going to be blessed. Blessings is going to be on you because that's who you are. Same thing, learn this too. When you look at Malachi, he said, I'll pour you out a blessing that you ain't got room enough to contain. Now, me and Dotson talked about this many times. We said, man, it's money. It's faithful as we've been paying tithes. Well, there ain't never been a time that I ain't ever had enough room to contain any blessing God gave me. I ain't been overwhelmed yet. Haven't any of y'all? Has he blessed you so much that you ain't had room enough to contain? I mean, have you had to build a bigger barn or something because he overtook you? No. <laughs> well, well, when I begin to look at it, we look at it as a verb, but actually it's a noun. It's not a verb. It's a noun. Meaning, I'll put blessing on your life. Yeah, I'll open up the window. I'll make you a blessing so whatever your hands touch can be blessed if you're doing these things. You'll just be a blessing. On your job, you'll be a blessing. On here, you'll be a blessing. Well, you say, well, how can you say that? Well, my job quit. Great. Go to another job. Guess what? You're blessed. Why? Because I put out a blessing upon you because your, your tithe, your giving has made room for me to allow you to be who you are. You're either going to be blessed or you're going to be cursed. Amen. I'm saying a whole lot of stuff right now. Y'all like, oh my God. Go look at it. You ain't got to take my word for it. Go look at it. Pull your strong concordance out. Check it out. Pull your, fine, your vines dictionary out. Check it out. You said, vine. I'm saying it too fast, too fast for you. Pull your strong or your vines. Go look at it. I've said everything too fast. You know what I'm saying? Everything too fast. Okay, so he said, you know, I will pour you out a blessing. That blessing, he's saying, is what you would be. Not just what I'm going to do. Now, you give me a tithe, I'll bless you. You give me this, I'll do this. God ain't sitting back just trying to react every time you give him something. He said, I'll just make you this. He said, blessed shall you be. But if you don't have a heart to give, if you don't have a heart, if you don't have it and you don't do it in faith, he can't make you something. It can't even work on your behalf. Okay, this last little part and we're in here. Kind of even dealing with the confession. Confession, confession means saying the same as. Okay, it means saying the same as. Which means saying the same as what? As God's word says. You know, when we make a confession, it means saying the same. But what are we saying the same as? Our confession should be what God says. What, what did He say in His word? What has he spoken in you? That ought to be the same confession that you begin to make. It's saying the same thing as. So when I make a confession of Christ, I'm saying the same thing that Christ said or the apostle said, dealing with the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. I realize that he died for my sin. And since I realize he died for my sin and made a way for me, I'm making a profession or a confession of faith in what he did. And because of that confession of faith, Okay. There also will be an, an outward one seal. There will be an outward uh, uh, what's the I'm, I'm saying manifestation. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit falling, but thinking about even going into baptism. When they made that confession, and they also were baptized. Why? Because it, it began to show from the repentance. Not only that, you also had to fulfill righteousness. If Jesus had to be baptized, what makes you think you don't? Jesus wasn't being baptized, though, for remission of sin. He was being baptized to fulfill righteousness. Okay? So he, it was the fulfillment of righteousness. Well, the same thing. So, it represents burial. Represented resurrection. Walking in newness of life. It also represents circumcision. Paul said when you baptize, when you baptize into his death, you also put on Christ. You can't put on Christ and live like the devil. Or you, you just got the wrong suit on. You got, you, got, you got the wrong suit. You got to get the right suit on. But 
Let's go. Let's go to Hebrews. Uh, was it? Hebrews chapter. Uh, I'm all over my notes. Hebrews chapter three, and we're gonna end here. I'm sorry for talking so fast. My mind, my mouth just gets to go and get excited. I would encourage you to go back on YouTube, whether buy the CD, get with Brother Chris, buy the CD or whatever. Go back and listen. There are times I go back and, and, and listen to the Word, and I, I listen sometimes even for different reasons, you know, sometimes even from a oration standpoint, from a ministry standpoint, think, man, how could I do better? It's like, oh man, you, or like she's saying, you're talking too fast. You're talking way too fast. Slow down. I'll go back and listen, but man, she was right. Slow down. Because you're talking way too fast that way. But at the same time, go back and listen. If you get the CD, go back and listen. There'll be things you'll hear. There's sometimes I'm like, man, that came out. I didn't even realize I said that. I'm like, that's pretty good. I had to check that out myself. And that's true. Not because it's me. It's what God is saying. But take the time. Begin to study. Begin to try to get an understanding. You know, you ain't got to just take my word for it. Grab some books. When I say grab some books, I'm really talking about the word. Maybe like a Strong's Concordance, a Vines Dictionary. They begin to break down a lot of the Hebrew and the Greek meanings of the word. And then you got to begin to ask, ask God and begin to pray and ask Him to help you rightly divide that word. Okay. And because you can go, you can go in the study and make the Bible say anything you want. They making the Bible say whatever they want to make it to say. And in so much that they saying, hey, even, you know, you can have two men living together and be married, and that's cool. And, and God ordains it. Really? What Bible you read? But they were saying, oh, they, they got scripture to help you understand. So if you want to make your Bible say anything you, you want it to say, you can make it say that. But if you want to get the truth of what God is saying, you ask God to begin to open your heart, begin to open your understanding, open your ears, and to help you rightly divide the word of truth. Amen? Uh, Hebrews 3 and 1 says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of what? Our profession of Christ Jesus. That profession is the same as confession. So he is our advocate. He's the high priest. You know, he's, he's our advocate in heaven. So what, whatever confession we make here, he's going to be an advocate in heaven, making on our behalf there. But if we keep our mouth closed here, he's going to keep his mouth closed there. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Whatever your heart is filled up with would eventually come out your mouth. What's your heart filled with? Ooh, Jesus. But if it's full of the faith in Jesus Christ, guess what? That confession, that profession is going to be made in Jesus. And then your life, again, into that life is then going to line up. There's going to be some action. You're not going to go contrary to the confession or profession you're making. But whatever confession you're making here, he said, I'll in turn be your advocate in heaven for you. But if you keep your mouth closed here, I can't advocate for you up there. That makes sense? He, he is our advocate. He's our go-between. He's, he's making intercession for us. You know, but things that we speak, he'll, he'll say, if you deny me, guess what? I'll deny you before my father. But if you don't have a problem making a stand and confessing me, guess what? I'll also confess you before my father. So things you say will come out. But we, we have to, whatever you really have in your heart is going to come out through your mouth. Which then leads to the whole other class of we determine how our body and how we move by what we speak. And that's why James said you can take the bit in the horse's mouth and you turn that whole body. You got this little bitty little helm or rudder to move this big old ship. He says, so is the tongue. This tongue will determine where you go. That's so strong. Things you confess and things you speaking will move your whole body. Amen. Amen. Questions? Okay.
they like, man, I don't even know, man. We got to go back and listen to that whole thing. Like, you don't say it way too much. I know I probably said a whole lot. I'm so sorry. I'm, I do got to learn how to really slow down. I do. I just get like, hey, just get hype. Get excited. Get hype. Um, a lot of times you, you get excited. If you haven't experienced this, you will if you decide to begin to really read the Word of God and try to get in. It's, it gets excited when you're reading the Word and then something jumps out to you and it comes to light and you get some understanding. You're like, oh, that's, ooh, that's good. Wow. Wow, that's good. It's like, oh, that's what that means. Oh. You know, or, I mean, and sometimes, you know, I mean, almost like what you said, like, man, maybe he was using her to say this or whatever. Yeah, maybe so. But we won't deny that. She had to be able to weigh that out between her and God and within the spirit, you know. I am a little leery of people always having a word for me and God don't ever tell me nothing. Like, how you always got a word when I ain't heard nothing? So you have to be leery of that as well. But that's why you try the spirit, by the spirit, to see whether it be of God. Yes, ma'am. The scripture that came to me, we were talking about it, um, was John 10 and 27, where it says, My sheep hear my voice, mm -hmm. and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more in John 16, but I think people can speak good things mm -hmm. because God does give us a conscience. Mm -hmm. So we know right from wrong, you know, and we know to speak good. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times people confuse that speaking good for speaking God's voice. Just me personally, I love this. It's going to challenge me. And I don't think God's talking to everybody like I, like people are saying. Uh -huh. But this gives me some challenge to get my words together for that. You know Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Because I believe that he speaks to his sheep. I, I do believe that. Oh, oh well, he, definitely, he definitely speaks to his people, but there are times he speaks to those that are not his people yet. Yeah. Well, it's the goodness of the Lord that leadeth men to repentance. Co correct. You know what I mean? And that, that goodness is one his grace, one is his mercy. It's not necessarily a lot of times I think sometimes we think it's the goodness of the Lord is because somebody got blessed with something. Well, no, the goodness, I'm not saying you saying that. I'm saying people. The goodness of the Lord leads a man to repent of his grace and mercy. God had to speak to all of us in an unsaved state. Right. He heard a sinner's cry. A absolutely. You know, there are many times he's speaking to us, period, saved and unsaved. And we decide, we make a choice because he gives us a choice on how we respond to what we hear. However, there are many that are saying this about, well, I got this with God, I got this with God, I got this. Well, show me your works by your faith. And, and don't just show me, you know, there, there's... Don't, don't say you, you, you don't heal, you don't deliver, you don't set free, and your life is raggedy. I have very little, very little respect for you. I'm just being honest. I mean, I mean don't, it don't line up with God. I mean, you all understand what I'm saying, right? I mean, the truth of us, we all like that. We don't have respect for somebody that say this, that, and the other. I mean, like, okay, man, this has happened, this has happened, but, man, how, man what kind of... How can you do all, and you, and this can be a little, can be a little confusing because you can think, well, how can you do all these things where really it's not you doing this, God, but how does it seem like all these things are happening and you, don't, you ain't even walking this thing? I, my heart go out in a sense to people like that because either they came to a place that they just stubborn or they're looking at the wrong thing and they're deceived. And so I pray for them in the regards that God gets their attention, that whatever stony heart or whatever area that they're being uh, rebellious in, that they get the understanding and God opens it up to them before it's everlasting too late. But at the end of the day, they got to be the one to stand before God. And in God, one thing for sure, He's a fair and just God. So we, we don't ever really, really know how many times God has talked to a person. You know, we really don't know because sometimes out of our own stubbornness, and I, I, I've, I've seen this, out of, out of somebody's stubbornness to, for saying, not so they have to say, Vincent, you know, in a sense they're thinking, well, Vin, they don't want to say, Vincent, you're right, but they won't say nothing at all because they don't want to lose any pride because somehow then what you said about me was right and I don't like that. I've had it happen. 
Especially when I can say, what does the word say? And they, and they can articulate, well, it says this, then what, then what are you saying? Yeah, but I don't know. That means you're going to be stubborn. There, there are things that, from a natural standpoint, sometimes can be difficult, I don't necessarily like. But God said it. So that's settled. I think it's I think it's messed up for I don't think I don't think abortion is right. Not just think I don't think that abortion is right even scripturally. I think it's really messed up. My wife gets raped and she gets pregnant that she cannot have that abortion. But guess what? His word is true. Not because my, I don't not because I don't like it. If I tell her to abort that baby, we just committed murder. And to think anything other than that is going contrary to the word of God, and I'm deceiving myself. Naturally, I don't like it, but scripturally, in my faith in his word, and knowing his word is the standard, well, I like it now, I've got to agree. Or, but I can say, in my own stubbornness, you know, and then that's why you have a whole lot, you know, when it comes to salvation and all those things. Have all, everybody, you know, you, well, you say it here, you ain't say it, you say it here, you ain't say it here. Why? Because many of us, when, even when we begin to look at the Word of God, we don't want to acknowledge it for what it is because somehow it just can't be that, even though it says it. Well, I mean, I don't... You can show me the Word. Like, like nowhere, nowhere in Scripture, nowhere did any of them that ever got saved didn't get baptized. Nowhere. None. Those who say you don't need to be baptized, and show me in the Word, because I don't see it nowhere in Scripture. None. Everywhere in Scripture, those who got saved, they got baptized. Now, in my own self, I can say, yeah, but I mean, man, but... What did the word say? That's all I care about. What did the word say? Understand? Hey, Amen. Any questions, comments, anything, any announcements? Um, yes, youth churches, um, this 